audio signal compressors. Let's go! First on my list is the Empirical Labs Destressor. This sounds good on essentially everything. It is known as the Chameleon Compressor. It's based on voltage controlled amplifier technology, AKA VCA, and it simulates old compressor designs. The founder of Empirical Labs, Dave Durr, is an absolute genius in my opinion. Now, if you look at the controls, there's actually no threshold, unlike on other compressors, and that's because, just like an 1176 compressor, which I'm gonna be getting to, there is a fixed threshold level, and you set it with the input knob. We do have attack and release controls, and then we also have an output knob. And the reason it's called a distressor is because it's a compressor combined with distortion. Down here, distortion number two sounds like tubes or valves if you're in the UK. Distortion number three sounds like a tape machine. And if you set the ratio down here to one to one, you can get just distortion going on. Another cool thing with stressors is if you have harsh frequencies, you click this button right here, the mid range emphasis button. I think is the name of it. And that'll actually bring down things like vocal sibilance, harsh guitars, possibly harsh cymbals. I've never really tried it on that, but it works a treat to do that. And the distressor also has a high pass filter on the side chain so that if you need to use this, let's say on a bass guitar, a kick drum, or on the mix bus, you set that up and it doesn't sound as smushed. Besides FG Stress, T-Rex has their compressor, and although it's not a distressor plug-in, Tiger from Acoustica Audio is the next best thing. It can emulate a variety of different compressor characteristics, although it does not emulate the harmonics or the distortion, but it does have the characteristic of these different compressors. Not a cheap plug-in by any means, but if I only had one to use besides the distressor, it would be Tiger from Acoustica Audio. And speaking of which, I'm gonna be talking about a lot of compressors in this video, but if you wanna use the real hardware compressors, this plugin gives you that. Look at all these different compressors you can use. I'll bring up the distressor, the one we were just talking about. Here's the real hardware quote unquote in the cloud. Although I think the plugin from Slate Digital sounds nearly as good as the hardware. If you really want the hardware, you can use it. And before I go on to the next one, a rouser from Empirical Labs, the official company that makes a distressor. This is essentially a better kind of distressor. A lot of people swear by this plugin and I definitely recommend it if you're on a tight budget i would wait for a sale but it is worth every penny like i said you can get pretty much all your compression needs done with the arouser plug-in or the distressor hardware if you are on a tight budget and want something that's pretty much cheap all the time even without the sale well i'll just put it this way plug-in alliance has sales all the time um, this one costs around $70 from Kive Audio, the XT Comp, although it looks like a distressor, or at least once upon a time it did. Looks like they got rid of the white knobs right there. But um, it also emulates other plugins or other compressors all in one. It's not just a distressor plugin. A lot of people like this. I'd stick with either the official one, the arouser or the one from Slate Digital, personally. All right, moving on to the classic 1176. Originally brought to market by a company called Yuri, Yuri, which is an acronym for United Recording Electronics Industries. The 1176 is many recording engineers go-to compressor. 
and it obviously works during mixing as well. Uh, and that's because, just like the Distressor, it works on a good variety of instruments. Now, not as many as the Distressor, and that's because the attack and release times, well, the attack times in particular, are very fast on the 1176, but it does very well on things like drums, vocals, including background vocals, bass guitar, and acoustic guitar as well. My favorite one is probably the Arturia Comp Fet 76. And that's because not only is it a great emulation of the hardware, if you click this advanced menu, it opens up and you get a lot more options than the original gives you. In fact, with this compression range control, the 1176 works on a lot more material. Time warp, another cool feature, side chain, lots and lots of good stuff. Slate Digital also makes good 1176 plugins. I only have the original one, the FG116. They also have the blue face versions, which are different, and people tend to like those better for vocals than the uh, Revision D or Revision E blackface 1176. Monster is an emulation of all buttons in mode, which is a feature, or really not a disclosed feature, but if you have the real 1176 hardware, you press all the ratio buttons in at the same time, and that creates this really interesting effect that works particularly well on drum room microphones, but the Monster is an emulation of that, and I believe it's still free, as long as you have an iLock. If you need a free 1176 plug-in, Analog Obsession Fetish is a good one. The slam button emulates all buttons in mode. And we also have this one as well, which is not exactly an 1176, but it's along the same lines. It's called FET CB from Analog Obsession. DMG Audio. This is a company that I don't talk about very often because I actually do not own any of their plugins, but many engineers swear by them. And that is their Track Comp plugin. Now, for this section of the video, I'm just talking about their 1176 Revision A emulation. And if you click on it, you can do 8 to 1, 12 to 1, 20 to 1, or all buttons in ratios. If you look where the red lines are, that's where the hardware is, I believe. You can also control that with a mouse wheel. But uh, yeah, a lot of people love the Track Comp plugin, which I'll be talking about for others as well. The... Poor Man's Track Comp, Hornet Multi Comp, set to FET mode, 1176. And this is one I've been meaning to review. Purple MC77. A lot of people say this is the best 1176 plug-in in the box. I haven't tried it yet. I can't vouch for that. But you can try it for yourself. 14-day free trial. And finally, the very first 1176 plug-in I owned was the Black 76 from IK Multimedia. Yeah, I, I should try this out again. A lot of people say it's not like an exact emulation of it, like, you know, say the Slate one is, but, um, you know, it has its purposes. It has its uses. Next on my list is the Teletronics LA-2A, which is a tube-based, very easy to use compressor. Now, the one from Hornet is the one that I recommend nowadays because number one, it's very affordable. Number two, it has a lot more options than the hardware does and other plugins do. Hornet's developer really tried to take this to the next level. And um, yeah, good stuff. It sounds good. Uh, very underrated plugin in my opinion. The LA-2A is known for being great on vocals bass guitar, as well as sometimes on the mix bus. Now, its brother compressor, which is also available in hardware land, is the LA-3A. Now, the LA-3A takes away the tubes, and honestly, it's very similar to an 1176 Revision G, which, by the way, if you want to use the real hardware, or I should say a clone of the hardware, this company Mix Analog. They have 1176s out the wazoo. They also have an LA-2A clone. 
They have the blue face, the black face, the G, the revision G, like I was saying, um, which sounds like a LA3A. This is real hardware in the cloud. Your audio is going to be going through real hardware. And yes, I do believe compressors still beat out plugins just a little bit these days, but enough where if your music, you really want just a top notch for your music or your audio, because actually I've used their 1176 and LA-2A to do voiceover work with, then you may, you may want to consider getting a mix analog uh, credit or subscription. But yeah, the LA-3A, great on bass guitar, acoustic guitar. I personally just like to use it for vocals because it sounds cleaner and it's very easy to use. Two of these are on my voiceover chain. And we also, uh, bass guitar, just, just gets soaked up by the 3A. I prefer it over the 2A actually. But yeah, more LA-2A plugins. We have the white 2A from IK Multimedia. This to me sounds smoother than some of my other LA-2A plugins. Cakewalk has their CA-2A, which I don't use very often. It was a freebie a long time ago. Um, I just don't use it. Number one, I, I don't like that the GUI is not scalable. And I have other LA-2A plugins, so that's why. Uh, DMG Audio has a 2A emulation in their Track Comp 2 plugin. And then if you are looking for a free one, Analog Obsession, Lala, or Yala, both of these are worth checking out. All right, compressor number four, and that is DBX. The DBX company, back in the day, back in the 70s, released a very affordable hardware compressor by the name of the 160. The 160 compressor rose to fame because it sounded great on kick drum, snare drum, bass guitar, and to a certain extent on vocals as well, if you're after a certain tone. The one that I have right here is an emulation of the 165A compressor. This one's from Arturia. It's called the VCA65. If you're looking for a free plug-in, Analog Obsession has their DB Comp. Acoustica Audio recently released their DBX emulations called the Gray Pro. This one features three different models, the 165, the 566, and the 160 SL. Two of them are modern, the other one is vintage. And then finally, like I was saying earlier, DMG Audio Track Comp 2. They have a 160 model in here. I believe this is the original one, not the A or 165A. This is the DBX 160, which is different. Primarily, it has a hard knee instead of a soft knee, which DBX called the over easy ratio. Compressor number five is the solid state logic channel compressors. Whether you're using the 4000 or the 9000, it's got a sound to it. Similar to a DBX, I believe. So if you're looking for punchy, snappy drums, that is what these are mostly known for. They're also pretty decent for guitars. You can use it on vocals in a pinch, but it wouldn't be my primary compressor by any stretch. And it should be noted that the channel compressor is not the same thing as the SSL bus compressor, which I will be getting to in a moment. Here's a few other plugins that have an SSL style channel compressor built in. This is one of my favorite plugins in general, the Brainworks SSL 9000J, which has a different sound from the 4000 channel compressor. By the way, you cannot buy the DYN 4000 anymore, uh, brand new from Overtone. You have to uh, find it used somewhere, unfortunately. I think there was a possible lawsuit or something, and that's what happened with that. But there's still reviews of this out there. <laughs> Acoustica Audio has their SAN 3 compressor. On the third mode from the left is the channel compressor. DMG Audio's Track Comp has the E-channel model. And Slate Digital, a lot of people don't know this, 
Their FG401 compressor, which comes with their virtual mix rack bundle of plugins, the FG401 was originally based on the SSL channel compressor. They also have a newer compressor called the FG Dynamics, which is a direct emulation of just the SSL channel compressor. But this one, if you already had the virtual mix rack bundle, FG401 is what I consider to be a very underrated compressor plugin. No compressor list would be complete without mentioning the Fairchild 670 or 660 compressor. Back in the day, these were primarily used for mix bus or mastering purposes, but they were made famous originally by the Beatles, George Martin, and Abbey Road slash EMI Studios. These were used on a lot of Beatles records, on vocals, on guitars, on drums. Not that I would necessarily recommend them for modern times, but if you're going for a vintage sound, the Fairchild, which I believe was released in the 1950s, should certainly fit that bill. Fairchilds are most famous because they are just filled with tubes, and I believe they were one of the first kinds of hardware to have program-dependent release which is somewhat automatic. Now, Acoustica Audio has one of the best ones out there called Ultramarine, and they recently released a plugin called Midnight, which is an emulation of four different hardware clones of the Fairchild 670. And these hardware clones, even though they're not the real deal, they still cost a substantial amount of money. One of the best ones in Midnight, in my opinion, is the Eclipse 670 M2, which is a sampling slash emulation unofficially of the unfair child 670 Mark II. And one of the things people like to do sometimes, if you're not going to use compression, just run it through the saturation of a Fairchild compressor, similar to how people like to put a Poltec in the signal chain, even if they're not going to use the EQ, just running a signal through it changes it in a nice way depending on the track. And you can do that with this plugin by keeping the threshold all the way to zero and enabling the preamp. Because the Fairchild 670 is so popular, there's a bunch of other plugins you can try from IK Multimedia. They have their Vintage Compressor 670. Slate Digital has one called the FG Moo or Mu. I always say that, Mu or Moo. It's a combination of the Fairchild and a manly variable mu. Tiger from Acoustica Audio has their ultramarine mode. So if you already have the Tiger plugin, like I recommended earlier, it's in there. Acoustica Audio's Cardinal plugin has a Flickinger, I believe this was a 269 compressor. I may be wrong about that. But either way, this is kind of sort of like a Fairchild 660, I believe, which is different, by the way, from a 670. On the free side of things, we have Analog Obsession's Very Moon. And actually, a lot of people get this confused with the LA-2A, but the gate stay level is actually more similar to a Fairchild than it is an LA-2A. You can get a lot of compression out of the stay levels my favorite one is actually the Comp Tube Stay from Arturia. Arturia put out a bundle of compressors called Three Compressors You'll Actually Use. And yeah, I actually use them. Particularly for voiceovers, this is really good. And bass guitar, also good on the mix bus. When Acoustica makes this Ultra, it should sound better. It doesn't sound too bad right now, but Arturia's Tube Stay is the one that I recommend right now as of April 2024. And just like the other Arturia compressors, if you click the advanced menu option, you get these additional controls, which really help with mixing. The Neve 33609. This compressor evolved originally from the Neve 2254 compressor, which was used on a lot of vintage records. It's a diode bridge control circuit, which Quite honestly, I don't know what that means. I know it's different from VCA, different from optical or opto. 
different from FET, field effect transistors. Bottom line is, it was faster than variable mu compressors, but slower than field effect transistor compressors. So it's still slow, but not super slow, if that makes sense. But the bottom line is the 33609 sounds really good on the drum bus, drum overheads, the mix bus, depending on what you're going for. It's known for bringing the percussive parts of an instrument out without messing with the low end. I've also heard that it's really good on piano, guitars, background vocals, and brass instruments. Try slamming it on a drum bus or instrument bus in general, and then use this mix knob, the, the dry wet knob, to blend it with the original source. The best way to describe the 33609, transparent but smooth. You can get a free version of it, kinda sort of, from Analog Obsession. It's technically donationware. It's called the Brit Presser. Another good emulation of it is the Precision Comp Slash Limiter from IK Multimedia. And then Artoria also has their own emulation of it. Now, I do not own this, obviously. You know, you guys would be seeing the full thing. Oh, there it is. There it is without that in front of it. So, 33609. I like their other compressor plugin, so I haven't really tried this one. My guess is it'll sound as good. And just like the other compressors, it has an advanced menu for more options over the hardware version, which is pretty neat. Final category of compressor plugins, and that is mix bus. The obvious one is the Solid State Logic bus compressor which has been cloned by a lot of different places. There's tons of different plugins, but the one I keep coming back to and the one that a lot of professional audio engineers use is Cytomics The Glue. This one goes beyond the original hardware. It sounds nice and clean. This range knob is huge. And just overall, the glue... It sounds good. It sounds really, really good. So I highly recommend it. It's pretty darn affordable. And they continue to update it all these years later. So, But if you're not in the market to pay for a plug-in like that, Buster SE from Analog Obsession. I have heard very good things about this. I've personally not used it. But for this video, I downloaded it. And yes, it is an SSL bus compressor emulation just like the other ones, except you either don't pay a penny or you donate to Analog Obsession. And yeah, like I said, people have claimed that this one sounds either as good, if not better than the ones they paid for. So uh, that to me says a lot. Slate Digital has one called FG Gray, and it actually is supposed to have better low-end than the original hardware because of the way they, they handled things. AK Multimedia has their bus comp compressor, a part of the T-Rax collection. And here's one I haven't tried yet. I wish I could show you the GUI, but maybe I'll just show you the product literature. This is the Townhouse Bus Compressor from Brainworks. Apparently this is one of the first SSL compressors that were in the consoles. Townhouse took out the guts of it or, or, or asked SSL to do it. And that's when the rack mount version of the SSL bus compressor was born. And apparently this one sounds really, really good. Like it may be like the best in the box compressor, according to a lot of people. I've never personally used it. I'm looking forward to one day reviewing it or demonstrating it for you guys. But I um, figured I'd mention it on this video. Like I said before, the track comp from DMG Audio, yes, they have the, well, this is called the G-Bus model, SSL bus compressor, just like the other ones. Let's check out all the other models that are offered. So they have their own DMG comp, and they also have an 1176D model, and they also have a, I think this is called a Chandler Zenner, 
and the API 2500, which I didn't talk about in this video, but a lot of people like the API 2500. I'll be honest with you, I don't care for it. Like, it's cool, but to me, it, there's just better compressors out there. Uh, a lot of people who mix EDM or pop music swear by it on their drum bus, but for me, it's just not my thing. Um, but yeah, good stuff from DMG. The, the track comp, I think just like a distressor plugin, comes highly recommended. No, it doesn't have the hardware like GUI. It's a very basic GUI, but it gets the job done. Honorable mention, we have the Focusrite Red 3 compressor. Now they have the official version of it out there, but I have the Slate digital version, which sounds just fine. Um, this is known to be a very smooth and transparent kind of compressor. It came out in the year 1994. It is based on the ISA 130, which is why I'm now showing you guys the Focusrite Studio Console plugin from Brainworks. Because yes, they have an ISA 130 compressor built in, and a lot of people would not think to use this plugin on the mix bus. But I'm telling you guys, give it a try. FG Red is in the virtual bus compressors rack. So you can actually have both the SSL bus compressor and the Red and the Verimoo all in one if you want. Now I'll disable this one so you guys can see just those two. But um, yeah, good times. And we have two more left. As I said earlier, the gate stay level, once upon a time, I think they used it at radio stations. And then, of course, radio stations share information with recording studios. And then recording studios got this gate stay level. Very smooth sounding compressor. You can get a lot of gain reduction out of it without it sounding bad. And um, it sounds good on the mix bus. Not my first go-to for mix bus compression, but it's an option if I'm going for something that's very transparent. But speaking of transparent, the Green 5 compressor recently released at the end of the last month. I can't recommend it right now because it is really, really new and I have not dug into it enough. But it is based off of the GML Labs 2030 Mastering Dynamic Gain Control Hardware. And what makes this special is that it is a two-stage compressor design based around loudness, not RMS or peak detection like other compressors, but loudness. The way that the ear perceives loudness. And it is supposed to be a very, very nice mastering compressor or mix bus compressor either way i've heard very good things about it i'm just digging into it so i don't want to give my opinion on it just quite yet but it's it's something to explore something to try out and it's something that a lot of people either don't know about or there's just not enough plugins out there that feature this as a software emulation but it's definitely worth exploring so thank you all for watching. This has been Adam for realhomerecording.com. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. And if you tried out any of these compressor plugins, I love to hear your opinions on them below. Thank you all for watching.